Welcome back to Rhythm Reading Bootcamp, Season 2, Episode 5. We've already talked about in this season, we've talked about what happens with four sixteenth notes in a beat. We've talked about what happens when you have two sixteenth notes and an eighth note. Today, in this episode, we're going to deal with the dotted eighth note. Let's get to that. So just like with other dotted note values that we looked at in the past, again, if you haven't watched Series 1, go and do so now. We need to be fully conversant with the protocol for dotting notes. Basically, what happens with the dot is you're adding half of the original note value to the note to create a longer sound. In the case of a dotted eighth, eighth note, half a beat. Half of a half is a quarter. So adding those two things together, you get three quarters of a beat, three sixteenth notes worth of music, so more often than not, it appears in a fragment that looks like this. Dotted eighth note, then a sixteenth. So we have an attack on the beat, and then we're sustaining that sound all the way to the last possible point in the sixteenth note, subdivision the A. Ah. So if I just tap my foot and clap that out, it's going to sound like this. I'm going to go one E and da, 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 da. Now, it's important to work through some prep exercises just so you really get the hang of where that note is, where that note on the A ah falls, because it's very, very tempting to shift it to a more comfortable point in the bar. Either bring it forward and play it on the end, because that's easier, that just gives you the sound of two eighth notes, or to push it onto the next downbeat, which is not the thing that we're looking for at all. So, loads of tension, loads of rhythmic tension in this example, because it falls just before that downbeat, just before your foot hits the floor. Really interesting thing to put into your bass lines, and you'll find a lot of the classic grooves that you might like to listen to and play feature this rhythm. Let's get into this. We're going to start off taking our set of four sixteenth notes and we're going to replace the middle two with ghost notes. So that's going to sound like this. One, two, three, four. <laughs> So that's got me really comfortable with where the attacks happen within the beat, where each of those notes falls in the 16th notes of division. What I need to do now, the challenge is, is to sustain that initial sound for three sixteenths and then follow up with one extra note. So let's try that. One, two, three, four. One E and a two. Three and a two. Again, what I'm trying to do all the time is have that constant perpetual 16th note subdivision just flowing through my bloodstream all the time, regardless of the subdivision that I happen to be playing at that time. That sound that we've just played, 3 16ths tied together, 1 16th, is the same sound as the fragment that we're after. So let's just get good at playing that sound. This is how it looks. 1, 2, 3, 4. Wow. If you watched the previous episodes, you know the drill by now. We're going to turn on the metronome and put that thing that we just learned about in different points in the bar. Here we go. One, two, three, four. do is throw fragment number five in the mix with the previous four some basic note values and associated rests. One, two, three, four. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Undoubtedly, some viewers at this point will be asking the burning question, what happens if we take fragment number five and flip it around? So we get 16th note dotted eighth. Welcome to fragment number six. Now this one should be less taxing than the previous one because chances are you can play two 16th notes next to each other and then sustain the second one for the rest of the beat without many problems. So we're gonna jump straight into putting this thing through its paces at different points in the bar. Here we go. One, two, three, four. Now it's worth pointing out that that fragment that we just played is far less common than the previous version of dotted eighth, sixteenth. We still need to get good at it because one day it will crop up. If you happen to be, as I am, a fan of sort of some modern progressive metal bands like Meshuggah, Periphery, Animals as Leaders, you might hear that sort of rhythm fairly frequently. It tends to be like a, a really common rhythmic device that gets used in their music. Let's take that fragment, add it to the previous five, stick in some rests and some other basic note values for good measure and see what happens. One, two, three, four. So we've now covered the first six fragments that make up the basic 16th note language. And the good news is that if you've got to a stage where you're confident and accurate with all of these, then that's a really solid position to be in if you want to go out and read some real music in the real world in a bunch of different styles. Before we get to the next level of syncopation and complexity. We're gonna throw some 16th note rests into the mix. Before we get to that stage, I think it's really worth consolidating the learning by going through a little summary exercise that involves all six fragments combined in the same piece along with some other basic note values and rests. Let's try this. Again, if you need to go through it one line at a time, if you need to just scan through and check things before you play it, that's absolutely fine, nothing wrong with that. But ideally we want to get to a stage where we can sit with a metronome. My metronome's at 70 at the moment. Yours might be faster. That's great, good for you. We're going to go in at 70 and the aim is to just keep your eyes moving ahead of where you are. You want to be looking, you know, preferably two beats ahead of where your fingers are. And keep all your notes as long as possible. That's a really important thing about even when we're playing short notes, 16th, all of those need to ring for their full value. One, two, three, four.
In the course of playing through that, if you found that there are any rhythmic figures that tend to give you trouble more than others, it's a good time now to go back and work on those exercises that just focus on that particular troublesome rhythm. Um, it's really good to use these things as a sort of diagnostic tool to inform your practice time. And when you're confident and accurate with all of those six things that we've covered, then it's time to look at the wonderful world of 16th note rests, which is exactly what we're going to do in the next episode.